Hey, Spinks here with Quiet Cat. In this video, we're gonna show you how to unbox and assemble your brand new Jeep e-bike. So the tools you'll need to assemble your Jeep e-bike are pretty simple. You're gonna need a four millimeter Allen wrench, a five millimeter Allen wrench, a 15 millimeter open-ended wrench for the pedals or a specific pedal wrench, and then a nice pair of scissors or cutters to get through some zip ties. All of these tools can be found in any of the Quiet Cat toolkits, and the cutter is available in the Professional Toolkit. We're gonna to be using the T-handles out of our Professional Toolkit for today's assembly. So your bike is gonna be delivered to you in this large cardboard box. It opens from the top, and then we'll get inside and pull out some individual pieces before we pull out the full bike. It helps to have a friend to pull the frame out of the box, as the bike can be a bit heavy and awkward for just one person. So we'll go ahead and start by opening up the box. So with the box open, we can go ahead and pull out some of the foam that's keeping everything in place, as well as the battery and some of the other individual pieces that are just inside the box. So we'll remove these foam dividers that are holding the bike in place. One in front, one in the back. We have our battery box. It's gonna be marked the lithium ion battery and the hazmat label. Let's set that aside for now. Kickstand. And then we have our pedals in our charger. So it looks like we got everything clear out of the box. Now we can go ahead and cut the zip ties that are holding the front wheel to the frame and remove the front wheel. So I'm gonna use my cutters. I'm gonna get down inside the box here. There's three zip ties holding the front wheel to the frame. Two of them are up on the top. And the third one is down a little bit lower. So you're gonna have to reach into the box to be able to find that. Make sure that when you're using a sharp edge, like a cutter or scissors, that you be very careful not to scratch the frame. We only wanna cut the zip tie. We don't wanna scratch the paint on our brand new bike. So we'll reach in here, get the first two up on top. And now like I said, the third one is kind of down towards the bottom. So we're gonna reach in between the wheel and the frame, find that lower zip tie, give it a little cut, pull those zip ties out of the way, and pull up the front wheel. You'll notice on the front wheel, we've got some plastic protectors protecting the hub and protecting the disc brake. We'll go ahead and leave those on for now. And we'll take them off when we install the front wheel. Let's set the front wheel aside. Now you can begin removing some of the foam and the zip ties from the bike. Personally, I like to remove the bike from the box at this point, so it's easier to reach everything. This bike can be a little bit heavy, so this is a great time to ask for help from a friend if you need to, to pull the bike out of the box. Grab onto the frame and the rear wheel and lift straight up. If you have a bike stand, it's great to put the bike in a stand at this point. Otherwise, as you notice, the bike can kind of balance on itself. You wanna be careful not to damage the front brake by leaning on it too much, and be careful that it doesn't tip over as you could damage the components. If you're gonna use a bike stand, now is the time to go ahead and loosen up the seat clip, pull the seat tube out so you have enough room for your stand, and then make sure that the seat post is securely clamped into the frame. That way when you install the bike in your stand, you don't run the risk of it falling. So now that I got the seat tube secure, I'm gonna go ahead and place it in the Quiet Cat repair stand. With the bike in a stand, it's much easier to access the different components. So we'll start by removing all of the packaging so that we can gain access to the handlebars, the stem, the pedals, and the rest of the bike. Again, when you're cutting your zip ties, be very careful to just cut the zip tie and not scratch the bike. Okay, now that we've got all the packaging and the foam off the bike, we can start actually assembling. So the first thing you're gonna notice is the stem is shipped pointing backwards. So the first thing we need to do is loosen up the four millimeter bolts and spin it around to face forward. So we use our four millimeter Allen wrench. So we'll loosen up the stem bolts on the side. Then we'll use our five millimeter wrench. We're gonna very gently loosen up the top bolts and the headset cap just to relieve the tension. That way we can hold the fork legs in place, turn the stem to face forward. We're gonna go back to our five millimeter wrench. We're gonna hold the fork in place, hold the stem in place, and tighten up that top cap. You don't need to keep everything lined up perfectly right now. The idea is to get the top cap lined up till it's nice and tight. That's gonna pull the headset and everything together to make sure we've got a good connection. The top bolt should be snug to keep everything together, but not so tight that you feel grinding or tension as you move the fork and the steerer back and forth. If you feel grinding or tension here, go ahead and loosen that top cap up just a little bit. So now that we've got the headset tight, we can go ahead and tighten the stem bolts. 
Here we'll kind of look down and slightly line up the stem so it's pointing straight. We'll go ahead and make all the fine tune adjustments at the very end, but at least we'll get this somewhat straight and then go ahead and tighten down the stem bolts here. Stem bolts should be tightened to five Newton meters, which is snug, but not super tight. You want to be very careful not to over tighten the bolts. Also want to make sure that you're tightening both bolts evenly so that they have the same amount of torque all the way across. Next, we'll go ahead and remove the bracket that holds the handlebars onto the stem. It's four bolts with your four millimeter Allen wrench. When you get to the final bolt, be careful as the inner plastic shield might want to fall out. Hold onto the bracket and the screws, set them aside. And we'll go ahead and relocate this plastic protector piece and then we can go ahead and line up the handlebars. So we'll line the handlebars up right between the bracket holding on the display. We'll take our stem bracket, put that back over the top. You might find that the plastic display bracket is a little in the way. Just kind of give that a little push, give some clearance for the stem bracket, and then we'll get those bolts set back in there. Make sure, especially with the first bolt, that you go nice and easy threading them in. It can be very easy to cross thread this aluminum. So we just want to very gently get the bolt started and wait to tighten it down. Now with all four bolts started, we can go ahead and slowly bring all four bolts together, making sure we're even on all four sides. You want to get these tight enough so that the bars stay in one spot, but we can still twist them a little bit. We're going to fine tune the exact position once we get the full bike assembled. Now that the handlebars are on, we can prepare the fork to install the front wheel. This can be a little tricky on the Jeep bike because it has an inverted fork and a floating axle. So we're going to start by loosening the four bolts on the front of the fork with your four millimeter wrench. That way we can remove the floating axle. Don't remove these bolts, but get them nice and loose. Next, using your five millimeter Allen wrench, we'll go into the brake side of the axle. Holding onto the axle itself, we'll loosen up the cap. Cap comes off nice and easy. And then we can start threading the axle out. It's usually easiest to do this by hand. If it still feels a little sticky, you might have to loosen the clamp a little bit more. Use your five millimeter wrench on the end of the axle for a little help. And we can go ahead and slide the axle out. You notice that when we remove the axle, that the spring side of the leg actually fell down and is now lower than the brake side. Totally normal. Because this doesn't have a crown, these are independent legs. They can twist and they can go up and down on their own. This will all get lined back up when we install the wheel. Next, we'll go ahead and remove the plastic spacer that's between the brake pads. Set that aside, get our tools ready, bring our wheel over remove the plastic protection pieces from the wheel, and we can roll the tire on in. If you don't have a bike stand, it can be great to have someone hold the handlebars, squeeze the rear brake, and hold the bike up so that it's easier to roll the front wheel between the fork legs, line up the disc brake rotor inside the caliper, Line up the fork leg and go ahead and drive the axle through the hub. Remember the fork legs are independent, so you need to line up each side independently. You want to get the axle all the way in. Then we get our cap, go ahead and screw that back on. We'll tighten that down with our five millimeter wrench. And we just want this snug. We don't need this to be tight. This cap is very fragile. We just need it to be snug enough that it's squeezing the fork legs together against the hub. Once that's in place, then we can finish off with our four millimeter wrench and tighten the clamps in front. It's these clamps that keep the axle in place, not the end cap. Remember, do not over tighten the end cap as it's very easy to break. Just get it snug. Then we're gonna drive down our clamp bolts until they reach tension. And then we're gonna tighten these down to 10 Newton meters, which is much, much tighter than any other bolt that we've got. We're gonna go back and forth to make sure that we're tightening each one evenly. You want these tight, 10 Newton meters, 
But again, it's only a four millimeter aluminum bolt. It doesn't need to be extremely tight. Keep in mind, continue to go back and forth to keep both bolts even. Once all four are tight, you're ready to go. The next step will be installing the pedals. So go ahead and unwrap the pedals from the cellophane. You're gonna notice that they're each labeled on the pedal with a sticker. We have an L and an R to indicate left and right. So we'll start with the right pedal. It's gonna have the R on it. If you don't have the sticker, you can tell by the thread direction that this is a standard thread, meaning righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. So we'll go ahead and line this up and just very slowly start spinning until the threads grab. It's very, very important that we do this slowly and do not cross-thread the crank as that can be a very costly repair. The pedal's usually stiff enough that I can thread it on so it's in place. Then using a 15 millimeter open-ended wrench or bicycle pedal wrench, you can place that around the pedal chassis, holds the other side, and just tighten it down. This doesn't need to be super tight because as you're pedaling forward, you'll inherently be tightening. So you want this to be nice and snug, but not so tight that it seizes in place and you can never get them off. Once you've got the right side on, we'll move to the left side. Key thing about the left side is that it's reverse threaded. A great way to think about the reverse thread on the pedal is the pedal always tightens by rotating towards the front of the bike. So just like our right pedal, we'll get it snug by hand until we can't do it anymore with our hands. And then we'll finish with our 15 millimeter open-ended or pedal wrench. While you're installing the pedals, this can be a great time to remove the plastic film over the crank set. Next, I'm gonna turn the bike around so you can see it a little bit easier. And we're gonna install the kickstand on the rear end of the bike. So get your kickstand unwrapped out of the foam and you'll find a bag with two five millimeter bolts with nuts on them and some washers. Locate the tab right below the Quiet Cat logo. The kickstand is gonna go in behind the tab. The bolts will go through the tab, through the kickstand, and then we'll secure it with the nuts behind. Make sure that you have a washer going between the bolt head and the frame, and the other locking washer will go between the nut and the frame itself on the backside. The kickstand is threaded, so once you get in the tab, start threading the bolts into the kickstand. Start it off by hand, because again, very easy to cross thread it. Very carefully with our five millimeter wrench, we'll go ahead and Thread these bolts all the way through the back of the kickstand tab. Just get them on loosely for now. Make sure everything is nice and lined up. Once we make sure everything is lined up and straight, we'll go ahead and tighten down the bolts. And then for extra security, we'll put the nuts on the back side. This requires a 10 millimeter wrench. Washers in first, thread on our nuts, and we'll get those tightened. All right, now we've got the bike all put together. We're gonna go ahead and drop it down from the stand onto the ground and make our final adjustments, fine tune everything, make sure everything's tight, and then we'll be ready to ride. Okay, now we have the bike on the ground. It's gonna make it a lot easier to do our final adjustments. So the first thing I like to do is set the saddle height. An easy way to do this is to stand next to the bike Locate the top of your hips and adjust the saddle so that the top of the saddle is right about at the top of your hips. Another good way to do this is to put your leg over the bike. Go ahead and sit on the saddle and make sure you can touch the ground with your toes or if you're more comfortable, you can make sure that you can touch flat footed. This is really up to you. We don't necessarily need the saddle height to be perfect like on a traditional road bike because we have the motor to assist us in our pedaling. It's more important to have a nice, comfortable position on the bike that is easy to get on and off in case you come to a stop or an awkward situation. Now that I'm seated on the bike comfortably, I can now look straight down and determine whether or not my handlebars need to be turned left or right. Using our four millimeter wrench, we can adjust the stem bolts and make any adjustments we need to. Looks like the bars are pretty straight, so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that these four millimeter bolts are tightened down to spec. Next thing we're gonna look at is our bar roll. The handlebar is shaped a bit like a mustache. It comes up and out, it also comes back. So what we wanna do 
is get down on one knee so that we can look straight across the handlebar and we're looking for that up and over and we're also looking for that back sweep. And what we wanna see is that the bar is sweeping backwards and maintaining a flat parallel to the ground. Looks like this one needs to be rolled back a little. So I'm gonna loosen up the stem bolts on the front of the bracket so that the bar can roll. Just loose enough so that we can move the bar back and forth. Get down low so we can see. That looks pretty good. While we're here, we'll take a look at the center and make sure the center line of the bar is right down the middle of the bracket. That all looks good. We can go ahead and tighten the bars down to spec. If you have a torque wrench, tighten these to six Newton meters. If you don't have a torque wrench, these should be tight enough that it's gonna hold the bar in place, but still loose enough that it can move a little bit in the event of a crash. Now that we have our bars in the right position, we can fine tune all of our controls. This is really a matter of personal preference, but using our four and five millimeter wrench, we can move our brake levers and our shifters and get them to the exact position we need. Sometimes it can help to get on the bike to be able to gauge this position. We'll go ahead and match up the left side, get them snug, fine tune the position of our keypad, and of course our throttle. It's important to remember when tightening all of the controls on the handlebar to not over tighten them. They should be a little bit loose. A good way to check is using the hard part of your palm. We're gonna go ahead and smack down on the brake lever. And as you saw, that didn't move at all. So we're gonna loosen it up just a little bit, give it another test. Now we saw it move. That's perfect. We'll go ahead and reset it back to where it should be. And then double check that it's just tight enough to hold its place, but not super tight. The reason is if we have a crash and the brake lever hits the ground, we want the brake lever to move out of the way rather than crack in half. We can always move a brake lever back, but we can't repair a broken brake lever while out on the trail. Make sure all the controls are lined up. Everything's looking good. Lower the kickstand. And now we can install the battery, test the motor, and go for a ride. So now we've unpacked our battery, we're ready to install it into the frame. So the first thing we'll do is locate the rear or the lower side of the battery with the four prongs. I'm gonna slide that in and let it come down, and then we're gonna alligator up. You notice when we get here, the battery does not go in. And that's because the latch is locked. Locating your key, which is usually zip tied on the front, Go ahead and open up the lock, which allows the battery to slide in and click into place. We'll go ahead and re-lock the battery in, pulling out the key, and now our battery is nice and secure. Once you have the battery installed, push and hold the power button on the control pad. Watch the screen come up. If the screen does not come up, the first thing you'll wanna do is go through and check all the connections to make sure everything is connected. Sometimes these wires can become disconnected during transit. It's very, very easy to line them up and plug them back in. The last box in your kit is gonna be your battery charger. One end into the wall. The other end can go either right here in the side to charge the battery while it's in the bike, or you can of course remove the battery from the bike and bring it inside to charge. And that's how we unbox and assemble the Jeep e-bike. If you have any questions, drop them down below. Feel free to browse through our other videos on maintenance, tips and tricks in riding. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you out on the trail.